this video I'm going to do a recap on fractions. So I'm splitting this into four key parts of fraction. Okay, so we're going to start with what is a fraction? Well, let's start off with this, which you may know as a half. Now a fraction is split into a line with a number on top and a number below. This number on top is the numerator and the number at the bottom, the denominator. Okay, so what's, this is telling us what the denominator is saying that we've got an object or in this example we're going to say we've got a pizza. And the denominator, the 2, is saying that this pizza is split into two equal parts. The numerator is telling us how many of those parts we've got. We've got one, so I'm going to show you here. So we have one half of the pizza. Now, we can, if we've got something similar... So we've got two quarters, or two over four in this case. Uh, so similarly, we've still got one item, or one pizza, but it's now split into four equal pieces. Okay, they might not look exactly equal, but let's pretend they are. So four equal pieces, and we have two of them. So one here. Now we can see, hopefully, that this is the same as this. So we can say that these fractions are equivalent because they have the same value. Okay. Now, let's have a look at comparing fractions. So let's think if we have... Two-fifths and three-tenths. And we ask, which one of these is greater? Okay, well, if we had two-fifths and three-fifths, then it would be clear that the three-fifths is greater. But we don't know with this because our denominators are different. So the key with this one is setting the denominators the same. Now, to compare them, hopefully we can see that 5 goes into 10. And how many times does 5 go into 10? Well, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So there's a little rule with fractions that we can keep the value of the fraction the same if we multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. So... If we're multiplying the top by 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and if we multiply the denominator by the same number, by 2, well, 2 times 5 is 10. Now, we've got this fraction with a denominator of 10, and this one was already with a denominator of 10. So, makes our comparison a bit easier. Four tenths or three tenths, well, this one's bigger. And we can use our greater than sign. To remember which way around we want this, it's bigger on this side, so say this number is bigger than this number. Okay, so that's our comparing fractions. Now, with this, we had the denominators different, but one of them, went into the other. Or we can say that 5 is a factor of 10 because it goes into 10 with no remainder. Now, if we had something a bit different, for example, uh, here. 
two fifths on one third. Now it's not quite as simple as just changing one of the fractions because three doesn't go into five without any remainder and five clearly doesn't go into three. So we still want to get our denominators the same but we're going to have to change both of the fractions. So the best way to do that is to multiply our denominators. So 5 times 3 gives us 15. So we're going to rewrite these two fractions with a denominator of 15. Now, using our rule before that we can change a fraction by multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number. Well, this 5, to get to 15, we multiply that by 3. So we're going to do the same with the top. So 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. With this one over here, to get from 3 to 15, over there we're multiplying by 5. So, if we multiply the 1 by 5, 1 times 5 is 5. We can do our comparison again as they're now both over 15, which is bigger, 6 fifteenths or 5 fifteenths. 6 fifteenths, so we write our sign that way again. Okay. Now, in this section we're going to see how to add, subtract, multiply and divide with fractions. Well, for adding and subtracting, it's a very similar process to what we've just done with comparing fractions. So, let's look at two-thirds, subtract, one-quarter. So, as I mentioned, it's similar to comparing fractions because we need to get our denominators the same. So, 3 isn't a factor of 4, and 4 is not a factor of 3, so let's multiply them together again. So, just over here, let's do 3 times 4, which is 12. Okay. So, this is going to be a factor of 12, the minus will stay, and this is going to be over 12. So, to get from 3 to 12, we'll multiply by 4. So 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. To get from 4 to 12, we're multiplying by 3. And remember, it always needs to be multiplying. We can't just add a number. We've got to multiply the top and the bottom by the same. So 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. And now we've got the denominators the same. So our answer is still going to have the same denominator. With the top, we just treat it as a simple subtraction. 8 take away 3 is 5 fourths. And if this had been a plus instead, we'd do 8 plus 3, which would be 11 twelfths. So that's covered plus and subtraction. Now for multiply, let's have a half multiplied by, let's go with three fifths. Now for multiplying fractions, it's different to comparing or adding and subtracting. It doesn't matter about the denominators. For multiplying fractions, we multiply the top, so 1 times 3 is 3, and we multiply the bottom, 2 times 5 is 10. So multiplying fractions is probably the most straightforward one. Now for dividing, let's see, if we've got something like a half divided by 
a quarter. Now, when we're dividing fractions, we want to use a little acronym, which is KFC. Okay, nothing to do with chicken. It's keep, flip, and change. So what we do is we keep the half. So this is our keep. We flip the one divided by four and turn that into four divided by one. And we change the divide into multiply. Because we know how to do multiplying, because we just did it up here. So, 1 multiplied by 4 is 4. 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. Now, what people don't always realise is with a fraction, we've got 4 over 2. This means divide. If you think your divide sign, all right, we've got two dots there, but really what we're doing with a fraction is we're replacing the top dot with a number and the bottom dot with another number. So this means 4 divided by 2, which is just equal to 2. Okay. So now on to improper or top-heavy fractions. Okay. So, some people will see a fraction like this and say, you can't have a fraction like that. The number on top is bigger than this bottom one. There's nothing wrong with that. Normally, we think of a fraction as being less than one. So, the top number being smaller. But this is still acceptable. If we could think of this in terms of our pizzas again, what this is saying is, well, the two is telling us it's halves. So this is telling us we've got five halves. So it's something like this. So we've got one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves. Or you can write it as two and a half. Yeah. This might make more sense to some people than five over two, but they mean exactly the same thing. Okay. Now, we're often asked to convert from improper or top-heavy fractions into something like this, which we call a mixed fraction or a mixed number because it's got a whole number and a fraction okay so if we want to go from the improper fraction into a mixed number then what we're doing is we're saying well how many times does the denominator go into the numerator we want complete time so don't worry about any remainder for now well, 2 goes into 5, so 5 uh, divided by 2, well that's 2, and we've got something left over, uh, plus a remainder, okay, but that's got us our whole number, okay, well what's that remainder, well, two twos are 4, so that means that we've got a remainder of one. So two and one remainder, and if we're starting with halves, we're still going to have halves at the end. If we want to go backwards, if we want to start from a mixed number and turn it into an improper fraction, the thing to remember is the denominator is going to stay the same. So it's still going to be halves and we've got two complete numbers so we're going to have two multiplied by two which is four then we add on the extra one 
which we can work as five over two. So that means that we can get from a uh, improper fraction to a mixed number and from a mixed number back to an improper fraction. And I've done that very quickly, but the same principle applies regardless of what numbers we've got there. Okay. Uh, and I think we'll leave it there for now.